WSB stand up. If we do not stand up for what we believe, who will? This is Dolores Williams. I want to thank you, my audience, for listening to this interview today. I'm just grateful for the opportunity to share another week with you. And today, I have the privilege of interviewing a very special lady. She is extremely involved in many aspects of things going on in this country and in this nation. I want to highlight a few things, and you're going to be excited to hear from my guest today. My guest today is a wife. She's a mother. She's a grandmother. She's a San Diegan and a veteran. She's a patriot. And most important of all, she is a Christian. And here are some of the highlights about my guest. Oh, you see, she's a Marine. How do you say that, Patty? Hoorah! Hoorah! All right, hoorah! <laughs> Amen. She is a Marine. She's a tough lady. She's retired military police supervisor. She is an executive officer with young Eagle Young Marines for 16 years. She and her husband are very dedicated to these young people. What a blessing. She's a California Screaming Eagles board member with our friend Woody Woodrum. And she also is a precinct director for the uh, Tri-City Tea Party. She also volunteers to walk precinct, walk precincts a few years ago in Nevada. She and her two of her friends own their own dime. They went to another state. That's how dedicated she is. She's vice president of the American Cultural Center, uh, Council rather, for building homes for disabled veterans. Hey, man, you have to tell us more about that. She is a fundraising events and director for our dear friend, Sergeant Juan Hidalgo of the 51st District. Get out there and vote for that guy. He's excellent. 2007 to the present, she volunteers for the Toys for Tops collection program, collecting over 5,000 gifts for North County. And that is a blessing for children each year. She's elected as Republican Women of California, San Diego County president, November of last year. And she served in many capacities in that group before she became president. And also she worked with the California Republican Women Federated and Americanism. She was elected this year as a member of the Central Committee in March of this year. So that is what I want to say about our guest. My guest today is a fearless leader. Please help me welcome Mrs. Patty Sigmund. Good morning, Patty. <laughs> Good morning, Dolores. Thank hey. you so much. Hey, man. It's wonderful to be here. Praise God for this glorious day. Hey, Amen. We are in agreement on that. And with that, I don't want to waste some time because I want to hear what you have to say today. Now, I just want to thank you. Let me just properly thank you because you, you know, you are so busy, Patty. I don't know how you do all the things you do, but by the grace of God, you do what you do and he blesses you. Yes, so today, I want to start out, as a retired military police supervisor, would you give input about defunding the police departments that we see across our country today? Thank you. With a police background, I know how much people depend on the police, whether you're military police or you're a civilian police officer. We do not want anarchy in this country. We want law and order. This country needs law and order. People depend on us to stop the chaos. I would in no way support anything to defund, defund the police department. I'm very close to police officers, highway patrol, city police officers, deputy sheriffs that have just given their whole life to support and take care of the community. And uh, my goal is to, to just, we, we want to be there for the people. And you cannot do that if you defund the police department. Amen, that is, that is so true. And thank God for people like you who are out there sounding this alarm. Now, you spent a lot of time with the Eagle Young Marine program. Uh, tell us about that program, because I'm just interested to know what percentage of these young people actually go into the military and 
and uh, what qualifications do they have to meet to even get in your program? Thank you. As you can see, the photo behind me is an example of one event that we were in, the Eagle Young Marines. We were on Coronado in the Coronado Parade, and this flag is like 70 feet long. Wow. It takes a lot of people, a lot of young Marines to carry that flag and make sure it doesn't drop to the ground. And this flag was folded in half because it's so big that mm -hmm. um, it, it's just huge. But these kids carry it with pride. They make sure it doesn't touch the ground. Our, the age group is from eight to the completion of high school. Mm -hmm. And the prerequisite is, is that they cannot be on drugs. They have to be drug free. It's a drug free program. And they have to be doing well in school in good standing. <laughs> They can't be suspended or reprimanded or are having issues at school. We want these kids, these kids are there, there for good leadership. They want good friends and they want the leadership that we give them. Uh, and these, uh, these young Marines are taught performance objectives they have to meet. Uh, and when they complete those performance objectives, then they go before a board, a regular board for promotion. Oh. see if they're qualified they have to do physical fitness but it is a wonderful program wonderful now how many of them actually go in the military we have about a third of them that that go into the military the rest of them i would say about another third um do trade school some of them do um we have a lot of them that go to college uc santa barbara uh usd ucsd and their goal is to further their education and to be have good friends. They're taught good judgment and good character traits so that they can make good decisions. Wow, that is wonderful. I imagine some of them probably go into law enforcement. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Well, that is that is that is awesome. I, I just applaud you and your husband. And let me ask you one other question about that. How many other people help with that program besides this you and your husband? Yes, ma'am. This is a, the national. The, there is a national Young Marines, and that is in Washington D.C. And that is we are under the umbrella of the National Young Marines, mm -hmm. and it is international. Our group is called the Eagle Young Marines, and uh, we have been doing that, you know, 16, 16 years. Uh, we've had a great great group they come and go if they're transferred they can go to another unit across the country but uh, they're named differently and it depends on the people who run the program if they do drill and pt or if they do more than that and we do a lot more than that oh, okay that's great so i know you and your husband are there other people in san diego that work with you we have uh, retired Marines and active duty Marines and active duty sailors that work with us. Oh, okay. That is great. That is great. That, thank you. My pleasure, ma'am. Amen. Now, um, let me ask you this. You are a lifetime member of the NRA. Yes, ma'am. NRA is under attack. Now, I want to talk about that today because that Second Amendment is critical to citizens in this country so let's yes, discuss that yes ma'am well i am a life member of the nra uh, i was um uh taught how to shoot out in the country i grew up in the city but um, our family did take us out shooting in the country um you know and uh, so i grew up with the safety the respect of weapons and um all my life I've shot, you know, shotguns or pistols or rifles and uh, just out target practicing or going to the range or skeet shooting. And uh, so I grew up with respect for the weapons and I do believe that uh, that is our second amendment right is to protect our homes. I'm a firm believer in uh, the second amendment uh, in the military, as a police officer, you're carrying a weapon, uh, and that is to protect you and others from those that want to do us great bodily harm. And uh, I do believe that everyone has that constitutional right to protect their home, protect their family, 
and I support the NRA completely and uh, donate to them constantly. But I, I'm a firm believer we need the NRA. We need that Second Amendment right. And uh, I'm a strong supporter of that. Now, when we see what uh, the New York Attorney General is trying to do to defund, uh, to completely ob obliterate the NRA, what would that do to this country if she is successful? We would have a takeover. And that's my opinion, is that they want to take away our guns so they can get more control of us. We would not be able to protect ourselves from crime or from those who want to take over this country. You, 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 you're absolutely right. Now, I was listening to the new uh, <laughs> vice president uh, pick for uh, president-elect uh, Biden, who's running <laughs> against our president. Now, she wants to take guns from people. She says she would implement a buyback program. Now, when I heard that, I said, how can you buy back something that doesn't belong to you? You never own those guns, so how can you say, oh, we're going to do a buyback program? Please help people. I mean, you know, Patty, a lot of people are going out, they're buying guns more today than ever because they see the threat to this country. But you know what amazes me is that some of those same people who are going out buying guns to protect themselves, they will go and vote for Joe Biden, Camilla Harris, they will go and vote for these people who will turn around and take those guns from you if they have the power to do it. So how in the world can you have a buyback program for something that you didn't purchase and that you don't own? You're absolutely right, ma'am. You're absolutely right. And I do believe that um, <laughs> Biden and Kamala Harris are going to say anything they want to to get people to vote for them. Um, and they're going to appeal to the anarchists. They're going to appeal to everybody they can to get the vote. I look at what has been steadily done and what has been there to protect America. And I am a strong supporter of our president. I think that he, uh, he, he makes sense. He, he, is, he is the same way to me, the Marine Corps is America first. And the Marine Corps, that's why I went in the Marine Corps, was because our country needs to be placed first. If we live in this country, don't you want us to be first? <laughs> don't you want us to be protected? And Biden and Kamala Harris will do everything they can to destroy us. And I don't want to see the Chinese flag flying above the American flag or any other countries flying above our American flag. And that's what's going to happen if we listen to Biden and Kamala Harris. Yes. They're going to sell us out who the, for the highest bidder. But that's my opinion, and that's what I firmly believe. Well, it's already been proven. They've already, they've already done that. And, and Vice President Biden did a lot of damage to this country. Yes, ma'am. dealing with China. A lot of damage. Absolutely. And so the American people must educate themselves before this election. Um, now, w when I look at, um, when we talk about our country, you know, I was looking last week, it was so disturbing to see in, in Oregon, they were burning Bibles and they were burning our American flag, literally burning the word of God. So this anarchy in the streets, I know you have an opinion about it, when we see it all happen, little pockets all over the country. Do you think that will spread throughout the country if those two are elected? I think it will spread if we get people in this country that are leading it down that path. And it has gotten this far. And if uh, Biden and Kamala Harris get in, it would be a rampage to get rid of our guns, to burn our Bibles, and to just destroy America from within. Uh, nobody can take us from the outside, so they'll put the uh, anarchist on the inside to destroy it. Um, I am a firm believer in the Word of God and uh, to stand strong with my Bible and my guns. That's, amen. Thank you for that. Thank yes, ma'am. Yes. Um, you know, you were involved in the American culture. 
which builds homes for disabled veterans. Can you tell us about that program? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, briefly, I can. It's uh, a program. People submit uh, an application uh, and their disabled status on, um, you know, what they need and if they are, you know, at a certain, you know, low financial level or if they have special disabled needs. Um, and a lot of times there's contractors or, uh, or Home Depot or some other companies that are willing to supply the needs that we have. Uh, and Donna Woodrum is the, uh, God bless her, she has been the uh, president and the go-getter on this to uh, try to help as many disabled and we together uh, work on making that happen, the, the homes for the disabled to make them easily accessible uh, if you're in a wheelchair or if you need special needs in your home. Hey man, what, what a blessing. And Donna, of course, is the wife of Woody, Woody yes. of us California Screaming Eagles. So I applaud yes, them, they're wonderful people. Now, you are, I, I know you said you are president, uh, supporter of our president. How important, Patty, is this upcoming election? Dolores, it is critical. It is highly, highly, uh, I think it just, it's just very, very dangerous right now that uh, the people who are running against uh, our president, the things that are said, the things that are being done in this country, this election is critical. This, we need to see the person that is really God-fearing, the person who is protecting this country, and that is our president. And I want to reach out and tell everyone I know that this is a very, very critical election. We must bring President Trump to re-election. We must bring President Trump and Pence back as our leaders for the next four years um, because we are in big trouble if we don't. Big, big trouble like we have never seen before. Yes, you, you're absolutely right. And you know, and I keep reminding people each when I get the opportunity, take a look at Cuba, Venezuela, take a look at China, North Korea, some of these other countries where they do not have the freedom. And you know, Patty, American people take this country for granted. Yes, so ma'am. bash our president all the time. And yes, I said it, they bash him. They don't realize the danger and the threats that he faced. You know, I mean, he's disrespected in, in ways that no other president has been disrespected. And, 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 you know, only he would have those big shoulders and he could take it. That's why God put him in there because of his stand, because he stands. And, and he had a, a, a very wonderful uh, stand that he takes for Israel. And that meeting they had yesterday, he's trying to broker peace in Israel. He is yes, working man. all over the world for the good of not just a, I would say he's not just the American president. He's a president of this world. <laughs> I mean, yes, a president because he stands up for righteousness in this whole world. And, and too many people don't know and don't appreciate it. You know, if you lose it, Patty, it'll be too late. And if we lose it, if we will never get it back. And people will look back and say, wow, I was wrong. Yes. I did not stand then. up for my country. It's I criticized my then. own country. And now I'm living on a dictatorship. And if people think it can't happen, trust me, it can happen and it will happen if this election goes the wrong way. That's right. I just wanted to share one thing is that uh, my husband was a Marine security guard in Venezuela. So we're very familiar with the culture of Venezuela. Uh, we, we know what socialism, severe socialism, communism is like. Uh, you have no right to speak out. You have no right to uh, be out at night anytime you want. They have stores that look like box stores like Walmart or like Vons uh, or like Costco with the windows uh, uh, darkened out. Uh, and that's where you go once a, once a month to get your food uh, handed to you. You uh, do not get to pick your food. Your food is handed to you in a box. 
So I don't want anybody telling me about socialism. I don't want anybody telling me about Venezuela. Uh, I know from experience, and I know that at, at any given time, uh, you know, they just take over the streets and you just have no right whatsoever. Uh, I think anybody that has any Venezuela or Cuba experience, uh, they know, they know this country has the best, has freedom like you wouldn't believe. They come here and they cannot believe uh, the beautiful America. That's why everybody wants to come here because this country has more than any other country because we have given freedom. We have given, you know, uh, privileges to people. We have, um, we have, we want people to be happy. We want people to have, um, you know, everything they can and let them work hard. But if people go against this country, uh, then we're going to end up like Venezuela and Cuba and have nothing and be under the control of a dictator. That is so true. But Patty, you know, don't you see that happening in the council, uh, council uh, culture here? Conservatives and Christians right now, we're getting a taste of, of uh, socialism and communism right now. Because if you are a Christian, if you are conservative, you cannot even speak out against Black Lives Matter. You cannot say, you cannot say that they are Marxist, super Marxist trained group, which are their words, and they tell you who they are. They tell you, we want to bring down Donald Trump. We want him gone. We want to take him out by any means. So we're getting a taste of it right now on our college campuses, on our school campuses with the indoctrination of our children. We're getting a taste of it because our children are being pulled into this. Yes, ma'am. And, and, and it's happening. Exactly. We're getting a taste of it now. With exactly. all the looting and burning, all that stuff that happened after the death of, of George Floyd, that stuff was already ready to go. Yes, ma'am. You're absolutely and right. People are being and I paid. Do, I, yes, ma'am. You're absolutely right. And I want you to know is that there are people, there are patriots out there, uh, namely my husband and I, and there's many more patriots that do call out uh, Black Lives Matter. We do call them Marxists. Uh, we show respect, but when they start in is that we confront them. And uh, we go out on uh, car caravan rallies and have been confronted with them, blocking the streets, getting out of the middle of the street because they don't want a Trump vehicle going down the street and step in front of us and dare us to run them over. Uh, we. Uh, we stand, we, we are in our vehicles and we sit there and we, we do not move. We are not backing down. Uh, they either get out of the street or we go around them. We are not backing up and turning around on our caravan. But we, we recognize that Black Lives Matter is run by Marxists. It is run by Soros. It is run by millionaires who want to take over this country. And they know they're plotting just like you said, Dolores, this is all pre-planned. Yes, and you know, we had that same experience with our car parade for the president in June. <laughs> we had the same experience being blocked and literally uh, being attacked by a guy who literally got out of his van, blocked the street, and was literally attacking the van that was in front of us. So yeah, we had the same experience right here in San Diego. Yeah, when we go out right? on our street rallies, you know, we have people throwing things at us, giving us the finger in F Trump and even, yes, even teaching little children to, to hate their country. Exactly. You know, We've had eggs thrown at us. We, we have. We've had the kids. We see they have kids in their car, little yes. kids, and they're cussing yes. a blue streak. Oh, yeah. uh, is it, this is no way to raise children. Uh, we look at the kids in the, holding the flag behind me. Uh, that's what we want. We want good solid foundation with kids that stay out of jail, that make good decisions, that are drug free, and that love this country and are grateful to live here. Just grateful. They have a home. But why would we want to support somebody destroying this country? And if we don't stand up and vote right for President Trump and Vice President Pence, it's only going to get a hundred times worse. Yeah. And I want to encourage everyone, you better be on your knees praying for, for this election. Yes. For on your knees, praying for the God to bring President Trump back 
as our president because prayer changes things. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. My goodness, Patty, this is wonderful. I am so, so thankful to you for coming today and then just you. sharing with us, you know. Um, you know, this country was founded in prayer. Now, I'm going to go ahead and take my audience and, and God just put it on my heart to have you come back and close us in a word of prayer. Okay, I, I want you to do that. But yes, I want to go ahead and I want to say a special thanks to my audience and to each one of you who are listening to this interview with Patty. Patty, you are an amazing woman and I thank you for your fearless leadership. Um, we, need, we need about 100 more like you. And you too, Dolores. <laughs> Amen. But anyway, I just want to say, don't forget, you who are listening, to come back next week and to subscribe to this channel. And if you, we will also want supporters who want to uh, put your subscribe on my channel. I'll take that too. But uh, you can contact me at dwsviewstandup at gmail.com. And Again, come back next week, and I'm so thankful and grateful to you each week for coming back to listen. Now, I'm going to go ahead, and we're going to just ask Patty to close us in a word of prayer. Thank you. Let us pray. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we just come to you, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We stand for America. We stand for President Trump and Vice President Pence. Lord, we ask you to protect America from those who want to destroy it internally and on outside, dear God. We pray for everyone and their families. We just pray that they will vote right, that they will vote, dear God, for the beloved America that they love today. I pray, dear God, that you will guide us, you will strengthen us, you will give us the courage and the strength that we need and we give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. We thank you for Dolores and her team. We just praise you, dear God, for this ministry. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Patty.